be back um it has been a while and um as you can see i've changed a lot of things i still don't have with me um as far as my graphics and stuff that all come back in time i've just got to get it all put in on my new system but regardless we are back um i don't know how much we're going to talk about to on this first episode we're going to just try to get back into the swing of things um happy to be back uh been been dying to get back to this for a pretty long time it has been a long rough road uh which i'll dive into a little bit uh in just a few but just want to tell everyone thank you um uh anytime i'm out uh there's always at least one person that asks you where am i at coming back and, uh, and i appreciate that um i uh, it it shows that that union is really still thirsting for what they feel like is information that is not biased or hidden and uh and unfortunately that's always going to be especially now because small town media that we have here is obviously going to watch what mainstream media is doing and if mainstream media is getting away with very biased in your face lying they're not even hiding it anymore you know used to they would at least go to the absolute level of trying to hide things from you but they don't even do that anymore they just lie to you um you know like we have a president right now that is basically telling people look the economy's doing great you're just too stupid to realize it situation where and look the price of gasoline's falling all right uh, he said today's gdp results grew 2.7 percent last quarter let's be clear mr biden comes out and says things are great gdp numbers we aren't in a recession the numbers prove it which is different than a few months ago we had two quarters of slowing gdp numbers the definition of a recession and Mr. Biden back then said the GDP numbers didn't matter. Let me speak to one other issue, the GDP, and whether or not there, we are in a recession. Both Chairman Powell and many of the uh, um, uh, significant uh, banking personnel and economists say we're not in a recession. Just because the president says something or Jerome Powell says it doesn't make it true. But to be fair, the president's right about something. The numbers don't really matter. It's about how people feel. You can't change how people feel. That's why they feel it. Go ask 100 people for the definition of a recession. Few, if any, will give you the technical economic definition. But right now, 53% of Americans say we are in a recession. Another 13% say we are in a depression. In other words, Two-thirds of Americans say things are really bad. Just 10% say things are anything but bad. 10% say things are good. Although this is how President Biden described things a few weeks ago. The thing with his fight with, well, employment is uh, going up, basically, is that people are having to work multiple jobs now to just make ends meet. And that's what makes employment go up because you're one person okay under the previous presidency you had to only work one job so you count for only one job under the economics the polling everything that they do you only have one job so now when you got to have two jobs a part-time job or whatever it may be now you're accounting for two jobs so the data is looking like, man, we got people to work. Look at all these jobs that were being filled. No, they have to be filled because people are having to work and do all these things just to make ends meet, just to pay their bills. Mortgages is real estate as high as it's ever been. Rates is as high as it's ever been. Groceries as high as it's ever been. And the dollar is as low as it has ever been in value. All of these things are not by chance. Donald Trump, whether you hate him, love him, or anything in between, he showed that the dollar, the American dollar, the American currency, still had value. And he brought value back to that dollar. 
stocks were the highest it's ever been. Bitcoin was through the roof. Even though Bitcoin is, is rising more right now, more so to do with the fact that it sent over $200 billion to Ukraine. Over $200 billion, with a B, dollars to Ukraine. But yet people here can't get no help can't get any help whatsoever. You know, I said it was insane for people to want to look at uh, having your student debt written off and having the taxpayers pay for it. I would gladly take that over sending 200 plus billion dollars to Ukraine, Hamas, even Israel. I support Israel, but that doesn't mean we need to support Israel. They're their, they're their own land, country, whatever you want to call it. The problem with the United States is that, which it has with all these countries, China, we owe so much money to China, right? How is that possible is the fact that with trades, NAFTA, all that, the Bill Clinton did, uh, we owe China a lot of money. So we can't pay that back. So what do we do? We just pay the interest. One day that loan's going to get called, but... Until then, we pay the interest. So that's what the United States is doing. Except here's the problem with this. The money that we just gave to them, there is a clause in there that gives the president the ability to write that loan off if he feels the need to do so. So if by some chance Biden gets in there for another four years, which he, I don't think he'll even live, long enough to do that but if he does he could write all that off uh, you know you don't owe us here you go 200 plus billion dollars for free and it's not for free we have to pay that just kind of start off people have been wanting to know you know hey where you been what's going on uh, even to the point of where people are like hey man who got to you who got to you i'm like nobody Nobody got to me. Um, it has just been a whirlwind. I ended up, yeah, as a lot of y'all know, I ended up selling my business um, after over a decade. Uh, it was a tough decision. I enjoyed doing what I did. I love running the mailbox store, helping out the town. And I tell you, once it was gone, man, people didn't realize how much they needed it, including myself. Uh it was, uh, it, it, there wasn't money in it, but I did say, you know, when I was beginning to sell the business, you know, this would be something great for somebody to have who already has an established business. It does make money. It doesn't make a ton. Who knows? Uh, maybe one day it'll make a return, but not right now, not anytime soon. Second thing is, man, my, my health uh, kind of up and down, up and down, up and down, um, up having, uh, my, my right knee for whatever reason, just blew out on me. Don't really even know what the problem is. Seen a bunch of doctors. Nobody really knows. Um, at this point it's just whatever. And it, it's, it's better. I want crutches, not all, you know, not on them anymore, getting better, but it still hurts. So still, still sore. So that was a big issue. Like that was, that was huge. I wanted to start the KC show probably around December, um, is what I was aiming for. But then my knee shot out on me and, uh, couldn't even sit the way I'm sitting right now. Couldn't do it. Just killed me. So that was, that was the road and hopefully I don't have to go back down it, you know, hopefully, but, uh, elections coming up. I'm going to, uh, have our, uh, ballots, uh, put up here as we get a little closer. We'd love to talk about it more now, but you're going to forget it by next week. No longer remembering it come November. So we're going to, uh, talk more about that. You know, uh, it's, and I, and back. I don't want to talk about just bad stuff. I don't want to do that. Um, it is a part of what we have. And a lot of people like you will see people like I'll see who I've known for years and you know, they'll come up and talk to me and they're like, man, why is everything got to be so negative? I'm like, that's because we, uh, we created it. 
The KC show didn't go out here and create this stuff. The KC show was reporting it and talking about it. And if it wasn't for the show, you wouldn't know about it. Is that the way you want to be? If that's the way you want to be, go hide in your closet. Don't watch the show because we're going to talk about it. The only look, look at where we were four years ago, however long it's been. Uh, we were in some rough shape at a sheriff that wasn't on the up and up. Um, a lot of questionable things happening with the uh, sheriff's department, city police department. Uh, a lot of things that was going on. And uh, the reason for that was is that you had people at the top of the food chain who wasn't doing anything about it. And, uh, you know, that's the power of voting. The power you have, the power I have, and it is a power. And it's a responsibility. And again, that, that's why I go back to the city of uh, unions council is the worst thing right now for Union County because the only power we have to vote for the person who actually has power in the city union, old Joe, we can't do nothing to him. We can't touch him. We have to rely on seven people. I think it's seven. I can't even remember. It's seven, eight, something like that. The council. We have to rely on them to have a majority vote to do something about this guy. So let's say, say I'm in Joe's position, and you know, got four four people sitting on the sitting on who I've been able to befriend, charm, and uh, you know, let me tell you something. Charm can go a long way. Charm can make make people look the other way and go, well, he's such a good guy. I can't imagine why he would do something like this for a bad reason. So I'm not going to pay it any attention. That happens a lot. And then you have people who are in friends with each other, cahoots with each other. We've seen it in union, uh, things that happen in our political offices. We've had political positions be abandoned before the term was up leaving Union County in a absolute crap storm and honestly on trying to make it even bigger of a crap storm on the way out. You know, we, uh, we as a town stood up and, uh, you know, voted the last time, you know, voted no to the, to the million dollar bill that was going to cost Union tons, tons in the future because, you know, when you build new things, you have to sustain those new things. And uh, Union County is not in a position right now to be sustaining anything new. It, it's a, uh, it's just not feasible. You look at Food Line. Food Line went bankrupt. Y'all remember, Food Line went bankrupt. And then they come back with the money. Remember, they come back with this huge influx of money and they were building food lines like Dollar Generals. Beautiful. They were nice. I mean, these were some nice looking grocery stores. And uh, it just made you go, but there's a there's a girl right down here. When Dixie, when Dixie was there, and, and their excuse is just it's more to be deducted. It's just it's in the runs cheaper to build it because we own the building. But look at what happened. Food line, once again, bankrupt, went out of business. Bilo takes over a bunch of them and then Food Line turns around, comes back and buys Bilo. It's it's all taxes. Um, unfortunately, tax taxpayers pay those bills and um, it's, it's it's never going to until we change, until we vote and how we how we it's it's ridiculous. With that being said, let's talk about some good things that have happened in Union. Um, some of the biggest things that I've, you know, that's obvious, uh, tractor supply, Wendy's and uh, Harbor Freight, some very great stuff, uh, the, the, the bins that's uh, come to you. Um, hoping all of them do really well. I, I think uh, Harbor Freight was a great thing for Union. It was something very well needed. Just went shopping there the other day, got me, you know, it's a good thing for Union. Union needs more of that. Um, the problem with Union is that we are, uh, we have a lot of restaurants and um, restaurants can only go so far. You know, we need different, different industries to come to town and uh, 
Hopefully, uh, industries will provide industries. I don't know if anybody remembers, but you know, when I was thinking about running for county supervisor, I said there was one great business, one had a major idea for to the uh, Harbor Freight building. You know, I said it would fit in there perfectly. It would be incredible for Union. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the idea did come to fruition, but it, it came to fruition in Charlotte and not in Union. And the business was Micro Center. I don't know how many people are familiar with Micro Center, but Micro Center is like a, you can't say poor man's Best Buy because it's actually more inside the store than Best Buy and they have everything there. I mean, everything there. You find the most up-to-date technology in there, but then you can also go down some miles and find technology from 15 years ago. It's crazy. Whether that should be in there or not is another question, but it's there. They have everything that you could possibly want if you're an electronics person. And this business would have been massive for Union County. I'm going to tell you why. Because the closest one we had was in Georgia. I would drive down there. Jerry would drive all the way to Georgia just to go to this place. Because it offered something that wasn't any, there, there was nothing. The only thing that come close was Best Buy. And, and after COVID, Best Buy keeps nothing in stock, even to today. And what's the point of having a storefront if you don't have stock? It makes no sense. So that business in Union, because it, it wouldn't have mattered where you put it. I'm telling you, no matter where they would have put it, they, they would have made a killing. And I'm Charlotte, don't get me wrong, Charlotte's a great place. A lot of people are going to go to it. I'm going to go to it. I'm going to support it. But I'm telling you, I think it would have did better in Union because we're in the middle of everywhere. We're right in the middle. And people would have traveled to come to that, to that type of business. And outside the box thinking that you got to have, you know, how many businesses are out there that could sustain in Union County? without having to have interstates and big, you know, big cities, you know, stuff like that. And it would have made it. Uh, it, it would have made it tremendously. So unfortunately we getting one and I'm happy for that, but man, I would, I guess it was a good thing I didn't because I would have went broke, um, having something like that in town, that would have been wonderful. But uh, there again, I, like I say, I would have, I probably would have went broke pretty quick. With one thing I do want to talk about, how I'm going to do this show moving forward. Issues, things that are brought up, things that are talked about, they will be pre-recorded. Um, if it is something major that happens that everybody needs to know about, we will do lives. That, that will still happen. Um, the reason for wanting to do things on a pre-recorded state is first off, I can make an hour show into a 30 minute show, trimming the fat. That is the biggest thing. Don't want to waste your time. Secondly, cause I'm not perfect. Um, whether, whether some things that we are brought to like, you know, a lot of people, whenever they would talk about things that we would talk about, bring up, you know, like, like, uh, let's, let's talk about the chamber. Remember when I said there was a report that we had come out saying chambers missing money. Remember everybody's like, where's the proof? Where's the proof? Where's the proof? Where's the proof? And I'm like, where's more details? And I'm like, you know, not even news channels give you a lot of detail. They, when they first report on something, they give the basic information of what they know. And after that, you know, they'll, they'll update you as time goes on. Remember, I had a ton of people who were, you know, not a fan of the show, giving me the business, you know, oh, he's lying, he's lying. But then, you know, the day, a couple of days, it come out that it's telling the truth. Wasn't lying. And, uh, you know, I was trying to be branded a liar because people wanted to discredit what I was trying to do. I, I have no time to sit here and lie to you or anybody else don't have time for it. Not going to do it. Um, 
and uh, wouldn't expect anybody to think that I would. Now the men think we're, we're in better shape than we were years ago, two years ago. Um, you know, we can do better, of course. You know, uh, we have a lot of uh, inflated and thick budgets that we pay for people sitting in positions that don't even need to be. We, we have positions that could save the town a lot of money, a lot of money. And it's positions being created for friends, buddies, um, sometimes just people who don't want to do the work themselves. So they find a way to budget it out to create a position to where they do the work that they don't want to do. This happens, man. And it's not just union that it happens in. But like I, you know, I've, I got a buddy. He was ta he was talking to me the other day. He was like, man, I had to stop through Union. I had to stop by the grocery store and grab some stuff. He said, man, when did y'all start taxing food? I said, I, I don't know if it's food that's taxed, but what I think he was talking about was the penny tax. And he was like, man, do you know how much higher it is to shop here in Union than it is in Spartanburg? I said, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I, kn I know very well. And, uh, and it's unfortunate. And uh, hopefully, you know, can we can take those because, you know, those taxes only last seven years. It has to be renewed. And if I'm not mistaken, it has to be renewed by vote. Now, if that's true, I'm not sure. But the problem is, is that everything that was created and being sustained by that penny tax, if it's removed, our regular taxes will go up. Property taxes will go up, which are going up anyways to pay for what the penny tax has created. There is a budget for a reason. Um, and I feel like we don't necessarily follow that budget. And, uh, you know, we'll, we've got to, we've got to trim it. Things are needed. Some things aren't needed. Um, but what is going on? We are back. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about a few things. Uh, again, this is the part where you're going to kind of see some different things. You're going to see me on different days and uh, coming in and talking about things, but then at the end, joining all of it together into one video. Uh, that's that's the way I plan on doing these podcasts right now and adding a little bit of flair to it to keep you interested, to show you what I'm seeing for the most part of a lot of things. Um, but you know, there are just going to be things that it's going to be a lot different, but it's going to be better. Promise you that. So let's take a look at a few things that I had uh, been looking at and been reading about. Let, let's go to this one real quick. So uh, Charleston, South Carolina, they said there's been changes to marijuana that are being made at the federal level. They are saying that uh, marijuana is now, instead of going to be a Schedule 1 drug, it's going to turn into a Schedule 3. And what that means is that it becomes recognizable as a medical needed drug. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I always thought that it was medically uh, recognized in South Carolina. You know, I don't smoke it, so I don't know it. But, you know, marijuana does have a lot of advantages medically. I mean, people with seizures, um, there's there's a few other conditions that it uh, Parkinson's. I actually think that it that it I've seen where it controls people's you know when they're tremor you know it, it, it them down. So marijuana does has its, have its place in the medical world. Now, if you would come into Union, for the most part, you would think that it's already legal because there's uh, pretty much not anywhere that you can go to now, it seems like, and uh, not, not get a good hit of, uh, of that aroma. So uh, it, uh, they said here in Richland County, and the reason I'm even wanting to talk about this uh, is that in Richland County, you know, once again, uh, a toddler was reported missing, died Friday after deputies said they found the child in a hot vehicle. At this point, when it first began happening, you know, that's been years ago. But when this first started happening, you're like, okay, the first time, maybe. Maybe it's a mistake. But if you remember, this become national news. Like, when that happened, it was big. Like, oh my God, this person left their baby in the car. The baby burned up to death, dehydrated to death. It was major news. And now, 
you have cars like my truck that will ding, 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 ding. I mean, it does it like five times, you know, hey, check the back seat. And now all these cars are doing that. At this point in time, if somebody leaves their child in the back seat of their car and, and the baby, the child, that's murder. At, at this point, you can't excuse it and say, oh, I didn't know. No, no past that we're beyond that um and uh it's shame to anybody that that does that so i i just hate it man i can I, just think about that you know you know it, it's it, it was susan smith right you know she had those two babies strapped in the car you know threw them in the water same thing you know either death is very awful whether it be dehydrating to death or drowning. I mean, that is awful for a child to have to go through. That's awful for an adult to go through, but a child that's helpless, it's, it's sick. But, uh, to move on to the next thing that I wanted to talk about was, this uh, This was shared a lot the other day, uh, this email here, or well, he said an email, but he put it out there, uh, an, a letter to everybody letting them see uh basically this was from henry mcmasters where he was talking about south carolina department of health and human uh, services is providing non-citizens with voter registration forms now voter registration forms more than likely what this is is going to people be people who are sending in absentee ballots and you know melon they're not coming in uh because they're non-citizens whether some are legal, some aren't, it doesn't matter. Um, I, you know, I don't think you can even vote, even if you're in this country legally, but if you're not a, a actual citizen, I don't, I don't think vote. I could be a thousand percent wrong on that. I don't know. I might have to look that up, but he basically says, uh, by the copy of this letter, I'm requesting that chief kill of the South Carolina law enforcement sled um immediately contact you for the purpose of arranging a meeting so talking you know that that's the thing about a look at politics it seems like on one side there's a lot of action when one side wants something there's it, it's it's action it's done we want to impeach trump for russian collusion even though we have no proof we have zero proof we got adam schiff on there Oh, we got a slam dunk. Had no proof. Lied. That's why you don't see Adam Schiff anymore. He has been banned from being able to sit on these uh, on these councils and all that because he lied. That's why you don't see Adam Schiff and his little buggy eyes anymore because of that. He lied. He straight up lied. They still and pre impeach Trump for nothing. For nothing. And they're talking about it as if it did happen. It's insanity. But with this coming off the back of this right here i do have something that i'm getting scheduled for next week it's um which by the time you see this will will be this week um but we are actually going to be talking with someone about the um voters the voter uh systems people are are concerned about the uh the validity and the uh secureness of these voter voting systems and honestly i have my doubts as well listen do we how many people really truly believe on the left or the right now i mean how many people truly believe that joe biden won the election i know i don't and the reason i'm not saying that he did he couldn't have beat trump and all that i'm not even getting to that point that's an argument that can be had i don't believe i don't believe chance in hades okay but this man got votes in the middle of the night, you've seen Trump winning and you see Joe Biden down here. And then all of a sudden in the middle of the night when everybody's asleep, I think it happened around two, three o'clock in the morning. You've seen this, you've seen this and boom, boom, he shoots up, shoots up. They knew exactly how many votes Biden needed to win because it's electronic. They can say all this paper ballot voting crap all they want that they're counting. No, they know. They have voted, they know what they need, okay? So, I, I definitely don't like ballots. COVID was invented just for that. It was, I believe, a coalition between the left, certain people of the left, and China to concoct this story of a pandemical virus 
that everybody loses their mind over. Remember, if you go back and you look at my videos, remember, I said, I am more worried about the reaction than the action. And a lot of people didn't understand what I was talking about. I'm like, I'm more worried about what are we, our reaction to this, this COVID, we didn't know anything about it, but look at what we're doing. Suicides were the highest it's ever been. CDVs were the highest it's ever been. Drug usage and overdoses was as high as it's ever been. Divorces was as high as they've ever been because of the lockdowns. Because people were anxiety, they were they were scared. I mean, they uh, elderly, s were through the roof. And was it because they got COVID? Doubt it. Highly doubt it. In fact, they were being told lies that hey, masks work. Remember, it was the city of Union because remember, they were trying to push for mandated masks and they were also trying to push for mandated time, you know, uh, um, good gracious, it just went out of my head. Basically, it, we couldn't be out on the streets uh, after a certain amount of time, which, you know, time of day, which was absolutely stupid. Like COVID was on a schedule, you know, but don't forget, they brought a doctor down, remember? He's the one that went so viral, wear the damn mask. And when I called him and was trying to just have a conversation with him, just trying to conversate with him, I said, you know, I want you, do you know that there's a study that was done by DHEC that shows that masks have absolutely no effect, good or bad, towards influenza? He didn't want to talk to me about it. Because I wasn't a doctor. I wasn't on his level. Though I can read. I can read studies of people who were much smarter than him. Who was scientist that's working in DHEC. This is a local doctor right up the road in Union Spartanburg, South freaking Carolina. Okay? I'm not saying he ain't smart. Of course he's smart. He's a doctor. But you also can be a uh, puppet and not think for yourself. Which is scary to know that a doctor can't think for himself. He turns on the TV and he and he's being what he's told. And, and if it's not that, what could it have possibly been about? Money. Money. Guys, they monetized and still to today still do it. Monetized anybody who come into the hospital, doctor's office. They monetized anybody who had COVID. So let me ask you something. If you're getting paid to say that somebody come into the hospital and has COVID. You're going to tell them they got COVID. Because what was it? $15,000 per person in hospitals that come into ERs and stuff like that. If they had COVID, you know, why wouldn't you? For every death, you get paid. I mean, it, 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 it was, why wouldn't you? These are things that, that um, I wanted to talk about, uh, to touch base on, but the biggest thing was to want to let people know that we're going to actually have someone come on the show who's going to talk about the voting system. And and that's going to be very interesting to me because uh, the thing about, and, and I'm trying to, trying to be careful how I say things, the way I say things, even though I may be telling the truth, there, you know, some people prefer a little bit more fluff and i i am trying i, I i'm just it's to fluff and work to lie um and i'll never lie but I, I i am going to fluff a little more but like we we see people who do interviews um with people uh and they could ask much more important questions and um instead you know it's conversations like well, what'd you eat last night you know what's your where's your favorite go hunting or your favorite vacation i mean stuff that doesn't matter when like it can be questions like whether it be uh our county supervisor our mayor our council members eat people of any kind of power control or anything among that people who can really answer some tough questions those questions aren't being asked and a lot of times there's a there's a interviewer who answered the questions for them for them why'd you even bring them on the show i mean seriously i have watched people ask the person a question and as that person gets ready to go to answer the question they will just interrupt them and answer it for them we don't do that here <laughs> i promise you that ain't happening because i want to know i want to know 
so and also it it's we we have a good town we got good people in this town and I, you know i know people are wanting to get word out on things that they're doing things that are coming up and and stuff like that and people sometimes will pay an extreme amount of money for advertisements and uh you know, you, you don't just do it because that is what you've always been told to do. You know, I need to, I need to know an article here. I need to go interview here. I need to go talk about it here. I need to go do it here. Why don't you just take a few minutes to review or ask these advertisers questions like, what kind of, what kind of your clients get? Is there anybody that I can talk to? Is there a few people that I can talk to? You know, Find out if your money is being spent wisely. I'm looking, looking forward to the interview with uh, with this person. I'm not going to say their name until we have them on the show in case something comes about to where they can't be on the show. Um, and real quick, thank you, everybody, for um, the, the amount of views they got on that video the other day was unbelievable. I mean, seriously, it was unbelievable believable i patty didn't think that the numbers were real because her phone wasn't updating and i had to show it to her on mine you know i had to show her the uh the amount of we got and uh and it was impressive impressive and and again that being said we're going to move on we're going to be happy we're going to enjoy being back cannot wait there's so many things coming ahead. Um, I'm hoping this first video is gonna be good with graphics, all kind of stuff. Uh, you know, my first video take that I had, it lasted, uh, it was almost 45 minutes long. After I edited it down, it, it was about 15 minutes. So, f you know, 30 minutes of pretty much, whether it be dead air, or repeating something or sometimes talking about something that's who cares you know in the moment when i'm talking i'm like okay this i need to say this but when i go in there and i review it i'm like nobody wants to hear that delete it so that's what i do but thank you guys thank you for watching we'll be back cannot wait for that interview and uh, we're going to talk about more things that we're going to be doing hopefully i can get all this edited down and hopefully come up with a schedule of um, when I'm going to be releasing the KC show weekly because I want to keep it on a routine and um, I'm working on that. So guys, y'all take care. Enjoy it. Have a nice night.